You are finally remade, Lolly. How dare you take my effect attack? You have a boomer skill set. Uh, how dare you? Uh. Ha, I live on 1 HP now. Now take my effect attack and get stunned for 3 turns. Ha! 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 Yes! 7k dreamer please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you enjoyed the introduction. I'm going to be doing a double review again and I won't go into specifics but I do want to give you a general thought and idea about Noah and Scope's remix so that you have an easier and clearer idea of using them. So let's start with Noah but before that, you saw earlier that my miss actually went first and she is now my attack leader. I've given her the speed build instead. So for Noah, her magic attack increases by 10% each time HP drops by 10%. If the damage is higher, she survives on 1 HP and her Awakened Gauge takes lesser time to fill up. So the main thing about her passive is that she gets a 10% increase in magic attack every time her HP falls and this sounds like a huge deal but it's really hard to actually observe the effect because there are so many factors involved and in arena it gets way too complicated especially with lethal multipliers, right? So it's gonna be very hard to get a good idea of it but you can try to observe her damage output as a whole and then see how much it actually does and whether it is good enough for you. So her only skill deals 200 magic damage to all enemies, ignores 50% of defense and also has a 50% chance to burn before transformation and has a 50% chance to stun after transformation. So her only skill has two different CCs. She gets her stun ability only if you unlock her exclusive item stage 1. So it is extremely important for you to do that at level 40 because otherwise she is practically useless. And we will observe her in these few matches before looking at Skull. Unfortunately, I seldom had a match where both of them actually shine together, so I had to do this split. And she's finally using her skill now, like right at the end of the battle. Here is where she burns and I have to deal with a Chris and I have yet to transform. So there's a lot going on here. Fortunately, I stun the Chris with the effect attack and that's the good thing about her effect attack is that she actually can stun. And it actually, as you saw in the opening, it really gave me the advantage. And I think this is where her moment is after she transformed. And that's why I feel that you really need to get her to transform ASAP and I will put her equipment in the bottom right corner for you to refer to it. Generally, the idea of how I get my Noah is to boost her damage output via crit. Reason being, Scoot is present to boost lethal rate of all magic allies by 30% so this saves you some equipment choices. Your goal to build her is also to get her to awaken ASAP as I said because she is truly a potential threat. Her stunning capability is the effect to be feared because now many players do not run stun resistance so that's where your increased skill use chance comes in and also increase awakening gauge charge speed. So basically that's it, we'll just look at one more match about her. I think this is another match where she actually put in some work. So yes, Miss is my speed leader, she manages to land the effect attack on the enemy and Noah goes first, effectively burning one person. Sometimes it's very annoying because when the enemy Noah burns me, it tends to burn my whole team. But when I burn the enemy, it only affects one of them. Super annoying. So as you can see here, on the second turn, she already transforms. That's a most ideal situation. I like the previous match where she transformed really really late. So at least now I can have a better chance of stunning the enemy. And also I guess this has a lot to do with increased skill use chance of 20% from her traits and her jewel. Okay, that's basically how I built her for this case. So facing a Rudy, Rudy actually prevents bleed from happening. So my miss potential is heavily nerfed because I cannot bleed the enemies. But as you can see my miss still did a lot of damage even with a speed build. Okay, so just something for you to take note. So I think Rudy, as I said in the previous video, you will see Rudy coming back in certain teams. I think that's a very fresh thing to see. Okay, because we seldom see Rudy at work anyway. Okay, 
And yeah, Noah is taking a pretty long time. My miss is really going for it. Landing the effect attack on Rudy, uh, freezing the freezing his awakening gauge from being charged for three turns, which is a huge deal. Uh, my scoop dies over here, leaving Rin and Noah still available. Rin is here to increase magic attack for all my allies, basically Scoot and Noah actually. Miss and Evan are unaffected. You can see here enemy miss hits really hard and here my Noah goes with heartbeat killing off one hero and stunning everyone that is her amazing amazing side okay that is what I am looking for and that's what you should be aiming for as well hopefully your Noah is able to land a stun as I said I think right now there is a lot of CC going on in matches and that is why it's very hard to be fully resistant to every status possible and I think that's probably where the challenge in arena comes in and that's also kind of the variety and diversification you will see in arena so let's talk about Scoot now Scoot has 40% chance to evade all attacks for 7 turns she increases her lethal rate for all allies magic allies by 30% and decreased counter rate for all enemies by 30% so she is a very useful unit to have on the magic team in my team she boosts the lethal rate for Rin and Noah and do note that miss lethal rate buff does not stack with Scoot unfortunately and even if Scoot doesn't actually attack she is still a very good passive unit to have on a magic team because of all the various buffs and debuffs she can land her top skill she deals 300 magic damage to 3 enemies and decreases buff duration by 1 turn. Uh, in my opinion, her top skill is pretty average. The 1 turn reduction is mostly useful against enemy Chris in Immortal Stage as well as against Guardian Rings if used early. So beyond that, I don't see much use of it right now. And her bottom skill, she deals 300 magic damage to 3 enemies and also has a 40% additional crit rate. Now her bottom skill looks very pathetic since it's pure damage but upon unlocking her exclusive item stage 1 this skill, her bottom skill, gains the blind capability and that is also what makes her useful. So her awakened skill also has blind and I have to say this really saves me a couple of times. So blind is kind of like a status that is underlooked. It seems that with Noah and Scoot's remakes Dev Kagura is putting emphasis back on all these statuses and if you have burn, freeze, bleed, death, stun, blind all happening in one battle, it is really gonna be very crazy. And as you can see here, my scout has gotten her awakened skill up and you will see the capability of blind now. Uh, if you realize her damage output isn't as high as what we had in the past, right? So I feel that she has been nerfed. And over here, Eileen completely missed, so she saved my entire team. Yeah, so as I was saying, I think Scoot's damage capability has been nerfed. She definitely doesn't hit as hard as she used to. I don't know if that's a good thing, because currently now... She all she needs to do is really to blind the enemy and stay alive for her passive on the magic team. Yeah, basically that's it. She's not that DPS which she used to be. And she causes Eileen to miss again completely. I mean, without this blind, I would have died a lot earlier. And here I kind of reapply the blind, I guess, because her bottom skill, remember, like I said, also blinds. So this match was completely saved and that is why I would like to dedicate this whole match. So in general, both Noah and Scoot have decent power but they can also be pretty frail if they are not geared well. Also, I'm beginning to feel that all these remakes of heroes are really to cater to new and returning players who are still fighting in lower tier PvP because if you just look at top tier players, they don't even have Noah or Scoot in their team. They are still having the typical Evan, Mist, um, Gelidus, Chris, you know, Zahara team. 
So it goes to show that despite having some slight difference in units and despite having diversity in arena, you cannot accommodate all the heroes yet. Of course, I certainly hope that they will venture into the area where different heroes can match up with one another. So it's not just one team in the top tier, but you know, you have a really variety of teams, magic, tank teams, physical, hybrid teams whatsoever. Yeah, and it will definitely require a lot more tweaking. <laughs> So in this match, Noah awakens really really early. The enemy is kind of mirroring me, also awaken, also transforming his Noah. Generally, I think my team is pretty alright but super unstable actually. Um, I don't think there's a space for both Scoop and Noah unfortunately at the moment. Maybe it's because of the tier I'm at, it's pretty challenging. I previously actually tried Battery over Evan and it's straight losses all the way. I think it's because Evan does provide some additional bulk for the entire team, I'm not sure. But yeah, it, it seems to work out better this way. When our uh, compared to using Compared to me using battery, even though battery's elimination was good, but sometimes she seems to target some of the weirdest heroes like Orca in the front line or even Eileen in the back line. Yeah, so it's kind of a hit or miss. It really depends on who the enemy, who the opponent set to have the highest attack. <laughs> So in this match, my scoot hasn't shined yet, which is sad. Only until now, <laughs> thanks to Zahara's cooldown. So this is where her one turn decrease comes in and it really really helped because Chris is in immortal stage. So if she didn't actually cast this, I would definitely have died if you were to continue watching. So here her awakened skill as I said doesn't do as much as before and she manages to blind Chris. So this is the crux. Do note that Chris can still land the death. And now I'm having Evan alone. So why do I say that this match is also thanks to Scoot? So as you saw Evan manages to hit Chris. So imagine if I didn't reduce that one turn. Chris would still be in immortal stage and I would definitely have probably have been killed. So that's all I have for Noah and Scoot's review. I hope it gave you somewhat of an idea of how to use them and whether you can use them. So let me know in the comments what you think of their remakes. Stay tuned for more guides. Do give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much and see you.